Oh, whoa, okay. It looks like, according to the brackets, we aren't seeing a semifinals match between the two. What? Uh, no, Yoko I think, and Google Fungus I, I started their ravaged forfeited. game, so. I don't see any record on it, but I think Drone forfeited. Yeah, I think these connection issues, I wouldn't be surprised, but Yo Google and Yoko are starting the game now, so. They are That'd indeed. Be good. So let's go back. Oops. Go back properly to Ravaged, which Google Frog going for Cloaky Butt Factory, and Yurga going for Cloaky Butt Factory. Yeah, I think even with the Rocco nerf, I think people may be uh, going for something a little more traditional. You know, they're tryharding. It's a familiar familiar matchup. I'd really yeah. like to have seen like, proper Rocco play. I'd really like to have God not to have switched out into into Rapiers in that match. But uh, I can't blame yeah, yeah, that. I, think, I really can't blame Gold for doing well, that. I, I think it's a strategically good choice, and often after the Raider game, and you can afford a fact switch. So actually, like that was often you can pick a factory just for its Raider. That's an interesting point, which kind of means go for Cloaky <laughs> most of the time, or Shield. Shield has yeah, I mean that is one of the reason. That's why they're one of the reasons why they're uh, such a popular factory, really, is because they have some weaknesses. Um, later game, I mean they later game primarily other yeah. than Rocco, uh, mid game uh, after the Raider phase. Yeah, well, but um, they okay, have a really strong Raider game. Once you have to deal with lots of defenses and lots of units, they have at best moderately strong units for defense busting. Zeus is a strong unit. I mean, it's accurate and everything, but it's slow and it's not a specialized. It's not very specialized in yeah. assault. I mean, because it, it has an accurate weapon. Uh, very few cloaky bot units are specialized, except for the units that actually cloak. So yeah, I think that um, ooh, an interesting micro here with the retreating that and damage units nine hit points on that glaive. Nicely done. Okay, so Yurga's on the ball. Both getting out alive. Yep. But they are both aware of each other's factory. That is the key thing to know. And actually, Google Frog is... They are positioning their glaives pretty nicely. As Yurga moves in, they were, Yurga was about to move into those glaives head-on, as straight line. And that would have been terrible for Yurga. You can see got, uh, Google is sending a uh, glaive around the back to try and kill any expansion. He might catch this LRT, but uh, no. It's seen on radar, so... Uh, yeah, Yurga they've got is, everything. Um, Yurga's well set. aware of what's going on. Google's done oh, what two. I like to do in this map, though. There's two Google's players. moved into the middle of the... Yeah, he's tra maybe trying to catch the other constructor, which can be hard to do because they're cloaked. It's exactly, it's one of the things about this, you'd pick, to pick it for the constructor in this matchup. You'd pick up the construction for the constructor and the raider, and they cloaked bot factory has one of the best constructors and raiders. So. But Google's mm -hmm. frog's done one of the best things I, I like to do in this map, which is um, move to the middle of the map. Um, you often want to move your commander in the middle of the map, put defenses there, and then expand with the constructor behind it. Yes. Because anything coming through that route, um, you know, even if you just base your units around it, as you're doing now, and defend with units, your defenses to uh, defend uh, to move back into, you have your commander to intercept, and you can expand with the constructor to that uh, point behind, and you don't go immediately for the low land, you go for the middle instead, which can give you a much, more strong, a much stronger position. Well, that's actually something that I haven't seen a whole lot of done in games recently, is going for that, I like to do it. that front line defense and then expand behind it. That's something that, like, claiming mm. the territory aggressively like that, that's, that was the thing that made me think that 0k reminded me a bit like Go, the board game. And mm. I haven't seen it much recently, so I was feeling a little bit unsure of what to think anymore. Like, well, is it like Go anymore? Because it's not being played like it. But yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, taking the territory in small bursts and then consolidating it afterwards. Uh, this is why I play Battle Commander. <laughs> so you don't have to worry the about territory. Oh, you have to can take the territory, yeah. You can use my commander to aggressively walk into the middle. But uh, you can see Google's playing strike. Yeah, for that that's same close reason. Enough. While Yoga, who's still in his base, is using uh, support. So you can see the, that coming out. Raiders around the back, though. Yeah, Yoga's taking that very strongly. And at the same time, I mean, Google Frog actually hasn't had much of a chance to expand all that much. Yoga's taking the center as well. Yoga has. While not an army advantage, seems to have a better position right now for their army. Google Frog scouting around, trying to make sure Yurga can't expand too much, but Yurga did a lot of da did a lot more damage to the back than Google Frog did. And while Google Frog has yeah, a center, Yurga has a better defended center. Yeah, expanding behind a, a well defended position uh, can mean that a, a sneaky attack can obviously take out your expanding constructor. The constructor's still mm -hmm. there though, which is good. He's building a defender. So are the glaives. Uh, 
to rebuild it. Yeah. The you can see that um, Google, Frog, Google Frog has a riot cannon. He's actually put a riot cannon on, so he's really going to use his aggressively as a part of the raider game to take a, to get an advantage. And we see some Glaive Micro in the middle of the map. Oh, but at this point, Yurga actually has seen that coming. Has already switched over to Rocco's. Look at this. Look at this Micro. Ah, oh, shame about the wow. LLT. Ooh. That was perfect Micro. It was five on four. Oh, he's trying to come in from the other side, but... That's a yeah, really questionable he, flank. Yeah, no, that's, that was really Not bad. Not against LLTs. Was, oh, wait, he's you, moving his commander and he's going to try and... Because he, he needs to conciliate this territory with his commander. Uh, otherwise, it would have been a huge loss for him. But uh, yeah, he swung it back around with the commander push. Yeah, that works. But that, it was actually five Still. versus four. He took out one glaive, he retreated his, his own. He took out another glaive, retreated his own. And he had four versus three then. And it was just a beautiful example nice. of glaive micro. But then he stumbled into the it. LLT. Yeah, and, then, and also, yeah, it's not just stumbled the LLT, stumbled the glaives as a smaller group into a slightly more spread out group of glaives. And lost a few of them that And way. then reinforced them with another group of blades in the rear, which just walked into the LT. But he managed to pull it back with his commander. He's got the reclaim there. He's going to build yeah. um, defenses on the high ground and secure the middle. And this is the strength of having a morphed commander in the middle, which you uh, move there early. The one downside, like I said, the rockers have already been built. They were being built before that even started. Like That was just a good read on Jurgis' part. They have already gotten the unit counter. I think he sees the commander there and he knows what he has to do. Mm -hmm. I think it's... Uh... Uh, a good synergy in general, the glaives and the right kind of. It's early game, that's such a strong combination. Oh, you're losing Absolutely. one glaive for one, or yeah, one glaive for one mechs, and they aren't moving forward to continue. They're a little bit too scared. I think they think there's more defenses than there actually are, but unfortunately now they can't move in any longer. That defender... Yeah, that's a big shame. They would have taken that three. damage with one, taken out the other defender. But the thing is, if there's another defender behind it, he loses both. Yeah, and you're going to... I can understand why he wouldn't. I mean... It's a Ooh. good, it's a good feint by Google Frog in a sense. Middle of the map, tick. Yep. Yeah, why well, Google Frog was paying attention. It's okay. Yeah, Google Frog avoided that, but still, the Rockers are coming in. They're going for the commander. That commander I is like retreating it how, uh, Google Frog as it should. Keeps uh, a group of raiders close to that constructor in a lower right. Oh, which is exactly what it needs to do. Is Yurga is moving in with another set of glaives, yeah. and now it'll be stopped. Now Yurga is not going to have as much leverage as they used to. Yeah, this is going to be another example of stumbling into LLT and LLT and Glaze and just being ripped apart. Mm -hmm. He might lose two constructors there. Oh, and over the center, there's a bunch of Glaze that are going to flank out the Roccos. Oh, Half, that's one almost tick. all of wow. them getting stunned out. That would have been a kill on the Roccos. That might have taken Ooh. the game. Although, Ooh. that being said, that was also a bit of a bait. Took out that one tick. That there's a beautiful. second tick, however, coming in. Google Frog. I think Ooh. might make this work. Oh. That still hey, works. No that riots, still works. Right? Google Frog still has this. Oh. Very nicely done, Google Frog. But there is no glaives or warriors to mop no, them up. No, that was the problem. So it doesn't. There's no point in stunning if you cannot. I think kill that it. was a bait, though. I think Google Frog was trying to just pull that out because the way those glaives groups were arranged, I mean, he had a few glaives around, so if one got ticked, the others could still go through, and that's exactly how that battle was won. He committed his Rockos to it because he, when he saw the stun, he's like, I have to kill him during the stun. I won't have to commit to this. Although there's more but, ooh, ticks another, coming in. Uh, it's not going in. Yeah, these ticks yeah, are much it, better it, it placed. Was, it's actually really... And Google Frog, I think, sees yeah, them coming. Yeah, Google Frog knows they're coming. Let's see if Baits out one of them. Mm. Loses mm. a glow in the process. Nice no, trade. He's done to it. Look how he's spread. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Google Frog is... Well, they baited out one successfully. The second one, they haven't. I want they're to see Napalm so Bombers now with so many glaives. Air switch... Air switch to warrior drop. This is fascinating because Google Frog. Oh, great. Now you're cutting out again. Not going for rapier. Yet. No, Google Frog's going for a warrior drop. Oh, there's drop a drop instead. coming. There's a drop coming. What is in it? Warriors. Ah. Yep, there is. Oh, they're so fast. Those transports. I think I thought they were. Uh, their speed was really uh, reduced. They're faster than vamps, right? <laughs> They're really fast, yeah. Well, let's see. Are they faster than hawks? <laughs> it's like the game on the uh, speed free. 51 almost per second compared to. Ooh, let's see what this does. The drop's gone in, but there are bombers there already. Ooh, but they don't kill them in one shot, so this might be interesting. Oh, I don't know what the speed is because I can't. Yeah, he's taking out a lot of winds. I think that's a lot of the energy infrastructure. Yeah, they're faster. Uh, but uh, Yoga has some solar panels to back him up. Yeah, that, so, that... yeah, he's, he's now even on parity. Yeah. It, it didn't really take him out that much. Although, it is worth uh, pointing out warriors, that you're right. Hawks... Three warriors, three transports. Okay. Yeah, the Hawks are actually slower than transports. 
So wow. of course you were right. But the uh, transports, I think it was a typo uh, when setting the unit parameters. What? I don't think I transports know. were supposed to be like this. No, it's that nobody uses know. transports, so we just keep making them stronger and stronger and stronger <laughs> and stronger and stronger and stronger. And stronger. Oh, here we see some glaive versus glaive battles in the middle. Ah, um, Google Frog has that. A transition, yeah, a transition into rapiers from Google Frog. I think that you can sort of call this game. A lot of it was an economy. I think the Rocco switch. Uh, I think with the Rocco's being a bit weaker now, the Rocco switch came a bit early. It was masterful used by the Yoga. He only needed to threaten with that tick. He didn't even need to use the tick. He just needed to have it there, and Google knew it was there, so he couldn't dive in on the Roccos. Which yeah. meant he could push the commander back, threaten the commander, prevent him from taking that position, and it was excellent use. But the fact he committed very heavily, he didn't commit with uh, uh, his uh, any raiders or mm -hmm. warriors, but he had to commit with his glaives. It might be a money glaives. show. Oh, that is... <laughs> that was nice. Well, that was not bad. That was damaging. A lot of glaives have died. A lot of guys lost their lives for entertainment. About six, seven? Yes. You see Yogi's commander under attack? Yogi's commander is about to go down. I think this might... Nope, this yeah, is not going to happen. Yeah, he hasn't a chance. It's... Nope, oh, the glaives oh, have no, a way out. Oh, oh no, no, he's the rapiers. He's just going to send... Boom. Yeah, ah, he's nice. The he's going to send the rapiers in. That was what needed to happen, because those defenders would have killed the glaives, no problem. And yeah, I think they're on reload, targets. but yeah. Why there are no tridents is a bit beyond me, but what the heck? Uh, you if you build up a big ball of um uh, drapiers because they can hit ground, That's the enemy true. can't invest in as much money in vamps as you can invest yeah, in rapiers. You can invest your entire economy in rapiers, and it could be your whole army. And if he's building vamps, then you're just sending glaives. Well, anyway, Google but, Rod uh, takes that. Yeah, game over. They they take it. So that's one game left. They're on match point to get up against Randy in the finals. So we're going to see what map Yurga goes for, because Yurga has the choice. That's too bad still that uh, Drone know. had to leave. I think uh, he I beat agree. him fair and square. I mean, I've been in that situation before. I've been in Drone situation before, actually, in a tournament once. Sorry, not Drone situation. I've been in Randy situation. That's what it was. So I know it's kind of nice when it happens, but at the same time, it's... Oh wait, what am I saying? Not in Randy's situation. Randy doesn't get up to the finals as a result of this. Gold gets to the finals for free. That's what happened. Never mind. Yeah, if you look at Randy's uh, path through the bracket... Mm -hmm. Got a buy from Yok. Yok's it off. Then he one would have gotten a buy from Drone. Yeah, then we would Randy and Gold. <laughs> oh well, maybe next turn. <laughs> Although I think next turn might be double a limb. And given how efficiently this has gone, I think double a limb is a good sell now. Yeah, if we can uh, get at least 16 players per tournament, then it's good. Well, I double really a limb hope, uh, is Steve fine will anyway. get uh, a new influx of players. Well, double a limb is fine regardless. And actually, it the nice thing about double elimination is that you either do it by ah, stupid spring crashed. Oh boy. Anyway, you either do it by the proper seeding, where at that point the worst players at least still have a second chance to do something, or you do it by random seeding, in which case you still have the accuracy because by the time you get to the end, at least the top two players have been the ones who've beaten everyone else but each other. Oh, it's a water map. That's the first one I see this tournament. Or at oh, least I see this tournament. Colta. I'm surprised Yurga went for this. I would have expected Google Frog, but not Yurga. Well, this is definitely a thing. Colta what? Yep. This is a map that Google Frog is fairly certain is quite comfortable with. Yurga, I'm not as sure. I don't know what Yurga has done for C play, honestly. Yeah, Google Frog. They're going for the sea factory, or ship factory rather, shipyard. Yurga has nothing built up so far though. Oh, there we go. Going to the opposite corner and going for Amphib. Interesting. No. Amphibs, huh? Skeeter. Yeah. The water game has changed so much. I think. From from uh, the other TA games, 
this is really unique from within all the spring mods that's mm -hmm. yeah we're very... trying to make it, water games have never been as popular so we're trying to make it um, more interesting we're trying to make it more like land we're trying to make you know the Raider Riot we're trying to make it more the Raider Riot yeah Raider Riot skirmish triangle because that works really well on land we're trying to make you know static defense strong like LLTs are so hit, hit, hitting hovers is really important we're trying to make things cheap enough but that it's, you can build it's them. bold for Yoga to pick this matchup because Google Frog has played a lot of this versus Rymark because he's a developer so yeah. he's interested in C and Rymark is the C balance Specialist at this point. They're the person going. I mean, they're the jump bot expert, but yet they've been doing a lot of C balance stuff as well. So By the way, is... which type of water do you use when you're casting? Bump water. It's occasionally a little bit tricky to see through, but the X ratiator allows you to pierce through it very nicely. So I find it's relatively visible. I, I think it's fairly easy to see what's going on underwater. Sometimes they this use dynamic up is interesting. That things up. This, this matchup is interesting for Google Frog because his Skeeters actually can't hurt ducks at all. He can stumble into them and just take tons of damage. Mm -hmm. In the case of Scrubbers, when, uh, sorry, uh, Daggers, when you go them, uh, you can you can hit dart, uh, uh, you can hit ducks underwater. Yep. But um, uh, the very light raider for the um, uh, shipyard factory can't hit ducks, and they can't hit any amp unit. But the means that uh, actually Google really Frog snakes. Skeeters are the fastest of the three, right? So they're the ones yeah, they're the that fastest, can move around. They're, yeah. But they're actually they don't do much DPS. No, they're, 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 they're their advantage is actually taking yeah, they have disarm a lot of disarm damage. They can take out wind generators, they can take out mexes, but they you know don't go in and do tons of damage and he might lose them to the urchin here. Oh he knows he can't I get him. I mean Yurga right now doesn't know they're there. Has no idea that there are skeeters around here. Yeah, he can take out one metal extractor. You can see how little damage they do, though. They're not like glaives where you go in and do tons of damage at close range. No. Uh, they're actually all right assaults. If you send them in, you can actually disable an urchin, which is one of the main strengths. But, you know, you need much larger numbers than that. So in his early scout, you can see he's already switched to subs. Yeah, quite some time ago, actually. I think submarines just flat out kill the entire... I'm fit lap, or isn't that the case anymore? It's, well, it shouldn't the be the part, case yeah. if Rymark's doing his job. <laughs> so we'll see. It's a well, test. Well, Amphib, the one thing Amphib underwater, I find they basically have, especially with snakes, you have ducks, you have scallops. That's about it. Everything else requires that the opponent is above water. Like everything yeah, else, like archers, boys, nut. grizzly, well, like grizzly so much because they don't surface to fire, but archers, boys, grizzlies, and they all have to hit above water. I think there's something else, but they all have to hit above water. And anglers. Darts, the old sorry, hermit, ducks and scallops can't, or can't hit. The old hermit, we're going to add it as a new unit, and if that means we have a uh, riot raider um, and skirmisher all as underwater units, I, I think that means that we can probably create a proper triangle for underwater combat then. Yeah, but at this point, it's basically raider riot, or sorry, raider skirmisher. And yeah, the raider submarine is killing the ducks one by one. The There's ducks have they a critical mass of submarine. The submarine can dodge the duck shots. The thing is, it has more range and it has more speed, so it can just kite indefinitely. Yeah, and duck shots. They can't fire backwards, and you can sort of just stumble into a big pack of them and lose a lot of and lose your submarines very quickly. Yeah, but it's quickly. not happening. <laughs> there is no yeah, big pack of them. Yeah, it comes down a lot to micro, and oh, here we go. He's, oh, he's yeah, getting the snake's hit. not you moving. See how much damage ducks do? It's two shots. Yeah, that's the thing. See, it's, it's gone. The it can have but dodge submarines do not have a lot of hit points. That has to be said. Only three seventy-five. Right now, the matchup does oh, come yeah. down not so much to unit choice, but down to micro. Well, Which in itself yeah. isn't that bad. Yeah, no, it's 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 why it's playable. Nobody would be playing C if, <laughs> if you know there is absolute hard counters. Well, despite uh, Google Frog's nice raids, um, Yurga is doing a lot better with standing. Well, actually, Yurga has been raiding quite a bit over to the west side as well. And Google Frog's doing some damage, but Yurga ha is defending. Yurga's Yurga's got himself set up decently well. This might actually work okay for them. I mean, yeah, we were, snakes we were really skeptical. Mass unit. You can't afford to lose them against them. Um, you need to pick the ducks off one at a time and use your you know, your additional cost, your additional weight. But um, it's not really happening. He's losing too many snakes. Yeah. And the Which snake is over why the he's switching factory. On. Oh, oh yeah, gun gunships. Ships. Once again. Hooray for gunships. Gunships always. Gunships forever. There's a bit of naked expand in the north though, which he's got a snake on. But again, a lot of snake has a very high alpha, but doesn't do him a lot of damage. So a lot of it's uh, and it has the slow, which is what gives it the edge in a one versus one matchup against you know slightly heavier units, which is sort of uh, 
it's kind of a theme of the ship factory with both the both the raiders, which is the snake yeah. and this skater, having disable damage to give them the a bonus in one versus one matchups in sort of direct matchups, which actually makes them poor direct raiders. Like they're bad versus buildings because mm-hmm. I mean they're bad versus mexes because mexes don't shoot back. And that's the thing is the ducks I and mean, the ducks coming in though it's they are able to stop it. Sky, sorry, Snuggle base in the chat is pointing out that ducks have a lot of map control potential. And indeed they do. And indeed we see quite a lot of that being used. No scallop switch yet, but Banshee's coming in. However, gunships can't hit underwater, so I think Google Frog's trying to bait Yurga onto the onto above water play. Yurga instead, however, going for air, which is above water, but it's much more useful. Yeah, it's given that the switches are about the same time and Yurga has a lead, it really relies on Google getting off a big rapier ball. He's harassing a little bit, it's doing okay, but he's not really winning the Raider game. Mm-hmm. He needs to get up a big rapier ball, and he needs Yurga to go bombers. If Yurga goes bombers instead of fighters uh, early on out and doesn't scout, he no, might get a big enough rapier event. ball yeah, that he can Yurga's get a hawk. advantage out of it. Yurga's a hawk. Oh, Banshees! A uh, hawk, I mean. Yeah, Banshees coming oh, out. Good names. And I think, as like, Forever that's... is saying... Sorry, as Forever is saying, uh, it's... Google Frog is trying to shoot, prove that Banshees are still good. Even though we have Rapiers now, he's trying to prove that Banshees are still good. He really needs a Raider. And this is the thing. Banshees are bad because LLTs can still hit them. But he's using Urchins, not LLTs. Mm-hmm. Urchins can't hit air. So we'll see whether this can do enough damage to swing the economy back in his favor. Well, that's all it has is spread damage. Because basically, other than the Haunt, the band, nothing though. Yurga can do can interact with the Banshees. And nothing the Banshees can do can interact with Yurga. Well, hit, but here comes the hawk, and the, the banshees are trying to hit the hawk. But if he'd gone in with rapiers, that hawk would be dead. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, ducks moving He's back. He's chasing it around. This is the thing. This is what you do with banshees versus hawk. You chase it around so it can't get any damage in. It can't turn around and fire at you, and it becomes a bit of a stalemate. It means you can mitigate damage a little bit, but um, that's not what you want. <laughs> it doesn't really get anywhere. He's, he he's peeling his banshee off actually, which is interesting. Well, that's probably a better option, is just distract that hawk, just to be able to deal some damage while the hawk can't actually do anything. We'll, we'll, ooh, in the ah. base, there, there's, there's yeah, the ducks. ducks coming in. He'll probably be able to clean it up, but it will do a lot See? of damage. The ducks are going to kill the commander. Especially takes out the urchin. Although, he's got to be careful with the commander. Ooh, They've got to be careful with the commander, though. The commander goes down, that's... Oh, well, he's going to say, all the ducks are going to die, and it that's exactly what happened. didn't take the nano, it didn't take... He has a nano, that's fine. He can reclaim it, he has air constructors, he can rebuild nanos, he can rebuild build defenses, and he'll be all right. Yeah, Google Frog's good. That, um, Yurga is on 60 income, Google is on 30. Like, Yurga was saying Yurga wasn't safe with their ducks. They didn't move the ducks out of the way before going for the killing blow on the commander. If they had done that, it would have been a lot harder. And Yur- uh, Google Frog has pulled ahead with his subs. If Go- Google Frog continues to c- c- kite with the subs, he might be able to pull this back and do some raiding because the Banshees took out a lot of the defenses in the north and he's moving up there now to take out the metal extractors. Mm-hmm. This is turning around and we get a vulture. Oh, he's moving into range of the uh, of the um, uh, urchins. Oh, but he's sniping them. It's good. But he might lose too many here, and the ducks will get yeah, the, the advantage again. Are the ducks are The ducks are flanking. Are they yes, they can. Yeah, they're going to work. And the ravens as well as extra support. Clean Cleaned up. Kill. It's very, very brutal uh, right now. Um, underwater combat and raider versus raider combat in, sh- in ships. You stumble just the wrong way. You run into a bunch of ducks. You get instantly killed. Or if you don't... If you don't um, uh, managed to get in range because ducks are virtually melee underwater. Their top hit is actually shorter range than their missile. Um, it's it's very very um, one way or the other. He's trying to use hunters here. Um, I don't think there's hunters enough. Well, hunters are pretty good, good <laughs> but at the same time, there might be too many ducks. Although the hunters should be yeah, able to survive it's, that. It's meant to be the counter. It doesn't really work that well right now. We talked to Ryanmark about it, and yeah, I'm, I'm not happy with that right now. But I mean, it can do some damage, but it's not a hard enough counter. Like, given that you when you when you need to recover from losing the raider game, you need a proper riot. You need something that yeah. destroys raiders and is bad against other stuff. Whereas riot, I'm finding that tends to be used as a very, very, very long, long suffering assault unit. It just takes minutes to kill something, but it doesn't die in the process. It just fires depth charges until it finally dies. Yeah, I, it's interesting that um, Girl Frog here is using uh, CAA, which is really, really strong against air. Um, so it's not as the air switch uh, is not as strong as you'd expect it to be uh, in land, mm-hmm. because uh, ship AA is basically it's as strong as a static unit. In fact, that's kind of the rule for ships is they are as strong as a static unit equivalent because their terrain is so much more limited, like a static mm-hmm. unit would be almost. 
But um, he only has one. I don't think he has enough economy. Yuga has a huge air advantage. Um, Google Fog doesn't have any gunships left. And it looks like Google yeah, Fog might Yuga's be done for. Yeah, going for the kill. I mean, we have... Oh, the Shredder's helping out. I mean, that is a Razor. But even then, it doesn't matter. It takes three bombers to take it out. Yeah. He has plenty. The Raven's coming in. Google Fog's throwing the towel. That's game. They're moving on to game three. Fascinating to see. <laughs> it's Google fascinating to see Yuga... Yoga considers himself a sea specialist that he chose this map against Google Frog, who's played a lot of sea, more than most people, um, given that he's involved with the balance with Rymark. But Yoga obviously considers himself a sea specialist, and he's right. He picked off a higher LO player. Yeah, there's no fault in that. That was actually well done. So we're going to have game three because Yoga pulled it back. So whatever map that it's going to be Google Frog's choice, naturally. We'll see what Probably we not go C. for. <laughs> what? What did you say? Probably not C. I don't know. I mean, that's about the only C map that's ever really played, so you're probably right. I mean, what well, else? There's a few others. Well, there's Flooded Valley, which... There's Blue Comet. Yeah, uh, yeah. But flooded... the only ones you ever really see are occasionally Flooded Valley and occasionally Coastal. I don't see any of those. Like, Incult is the only one that ever gets played frequently. Blue Comet I haven't seen in a long time. That was surprising, though. I have not been following Yurga very much. I have, I think I've casted a couple of their games, but I haven't actually seen a lot of their replays. I double check my history, because I... What was the last Yurga game I casted? Yeah, this is... Yurga. Well, not in the last hundred games, that's for sure. Last one I casted was last May. Wow. That was a while ago. So I haven't seen Yurga in a yeah, while. Yurga's always... Yurga's, as I was saying earlier, I'm really glad to see Yurga back in the scene. Um, him, He's part of the sort of... Him and Klon were just the, a powerhouse in, in Mean Machine. Mm -hmm. And um, he, he's a very strong player. He's a very strong player. Oh, I see. And okay. I think he can really give the other one, top 10 players a one for their money. Yurga has been doing a lot of tournament stuff, particularly in the 2v2 tournaments. Like, been, that is where he's they have been tops been in known, every yeah. 2v2 tournament. Like the, they won the first one with Saab. They got into semis against Skazi and Yogsatoth with... Oh. Yeah, no bronze match. Yeah, they got into the semis with... I think they got in third in the, in the April 2v2. They... Yeah, he's be, he is best known as a 2v2 um, a uh, specialist player. He, um... Yeah, they got finals uh, in the last Planet one Wars, too. He, I think he, they, he won it. He really I did. Think they he, was, won, he was amazing. Yeah, they either won or got second with Anarchid in the December 2v2 tournament. I can't remember who won that one. So yeah, definitely good with that. I just haven't seen them play 1v1, that's all. But apparently they know what they're doing. And we're going to be on Titan Duel, which is good. I like this map. This is good. Alright, so it looks like it's... Well, that's... Well, we're starting. That's pretty obvious. Alright, so this is the last... This is match point semifinals. Whoever wins this is going to be fighting against Randy for top spot. Sorry, not Randy. We're going to fight with Golda for top spot. Bronze match is... Well, whoever loses gets third because drones out. Yeah, I guess go. I don't know why I keep thinking Randy's in for some reason. <laughs> I guess because you know Randy would have been a head drone, not. I don't know. It, it's weird. No, anyway. Randy doesn't like you. He leaves when you mention him. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're on game three. Yurka got the last game, and Goofrog. Will they be able to take this, or will Yurga go on to the finals? Well, Google Frog, this is their map of choice. They will. Yeah, yeah Sackdoth, quick spec cheating. <laughs> Game hasn't even started. We can, I, I can talk balance with him. Yeah, but he's going to kick you, and then you won't be able to just watch us. Yeah, no. 
<laughs> he, he just wants, I know he wants to focus. I'm not going to continue the conversation after the game starts, but he's like, yeah, C feels bad. And I'm like, well, let me fix it. <laughs> he's like, that was a uh, no, that was shut up. <laughs> I'm playing a tournament. Yeah, obviously he's, 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 pretty, he's getting emotional about the idea of, um, uh, of uh, you know, what to do with C from here. But, um, but uh, he needs to focus on the game. Yeah, I know that feeling. You just think, I know, I had it, I had it. Why is it not working? I thought it was going to work. What do I do now? That's a tough feeling to get used to. Oh, and you're going for jump bots. Whoa. Very what? bold on this map. Extremely Got bold. Got to do this a lot. Got Unless you're Rymar, in which case it's normal, but... So what do you do from here? Uh, well, from here is basically pyros? a matter of... Yeah, pyro into moderator placeholder. You're trying to basically keep... Well, essentially set up territory control across the map so that your opponent can't get anywhere without you stopping them and sniping everything out. I was just playing this matchup actually in preparation for the tournament, which I didn't end up playing in, but I, I was just playing this exact matchup and I was using a lot of puppies as well, which are oh, actually yeah, not bad against Scorchers. Yeah, late, mid late game puppies are awesome. He went out, I ended up using a lot of levelers, but he didn't, the levelers slowed him down too much and he, I, I got a lot of rating off. So um, I sort of won on economy, which I think is you know often what ends up happening. Yeah, economy is, well, that's the thing that jump bots had the problem with, is that they have... Oh, you were playing jump bots, though, weren't you? Uh, well, I, no, I was, I, it was suggested that... It was suggested to, to uh, that uh, uh, Slashes were a better counter to um, uh, Pyros early on. Mm -hmm. But I don't know the choice on this map, because I chose that on the map where you could jump up onto cliffs. Uh, the dry version of the last map we played. Oh, you can jump it. up onto yeah. those little ridges and hide from things. And there's actually little towers, the ones you can build laser towers on or, or yeah. um in this on, on the wet version you build torpedo launches on top. You can jump a pyro up there. He can shoot at everything below him. And the scorchers can't get close enough to get their bonus damage. It's very strong. On this mm. map Not there so are some cliffs around the side. There but are the no little one ponds. ever goes there. Yeah I've never seen anyone on, take um, advantage of that. Absolutely, but we see. We'll see how the first pyro does. It looks like it's going to run into some defenders and then maybe right. do nothing. But it could get a con. No, it's wisely jumping away. Takes some damage, and that's all. Yeah, you really need to do a lot with your early pyros, but at least he's keeping them alive. That's the most important thing. I mean, at this point, Yurga doesn't even know what's going on. I mean, they know about the factory. They don't really know about the arrangement of the base, other than there are some defense turrets. On the other hand, Google Frog. Why is it going along the route? The outside of that, I so, think. So, just barely forced to a too. couple extra additional turrets uh, uh, from Google. Oh yeah, that's and it didn't cost them anything. So yeah, um, that's a good point. In the end, it isn't that bad. Yeah, Google Frog building more defenders. So that's although at the same time, Yurga was building the same number of defenders. So Yurga, no, no, no not quite. Okay, never mind. It looks Yurga like Google Frog. Frog um. Google Frog feels the same way about um, the matchup, that the counter is not to go levelers against Pyros, because Pyros have pretty good range and they can jump away from levelers, mm -hmm. but to go Slashes, because Slashes are more mobile, Slashes are better, sort of better defensively, mm. Slashes are much better against Puppies, yeah, uh, they're I even faster. Have one of the screenshots that I have unit, basically. For, my inter for the intermissions shows exactly that, the Pyro jumping away while Slasher kills it. The Pyro exploding in midair. Yeah, it's that extra range which really allows them to sort of uh, shut down pyro, a bit of pyro's maneuverability. Yeah, not to mention the homing capabilities. Yeah. That is not to be underestimated. And it looks like Google Frog is setting themselves up, and I don't really see how Yurga is going to get themselves... I mean, they're going to build more pyros, but... I don't know. Placeholder? That's what I expect. Moderator? Yurga's, nothing built. Yurga's slightly ahead on economy right now, so he's, he's not doing too badly. I mean, he slightly. is giving her, And that's... As long as he's doing that, and as long as uh, Google Frog's not building up a critical force, which it doesn't look like he's doing, the slashes are going to be a problem. He's going to need to figure mm -hmm. out how to deal with them, but pyros are not terrible against slashes. If you jump in, you end for lard, things like that. It's the a micro matchup. Yeah, and the placeholder is definitely going to make a huge difference. If that'll stop the slashes from being stationary, then they can't fire. Yeah, right, that's very clever. See the pyros coming in, uh, and then running away, and then dying. Yeah, and, and that's, that's once again a pyro getting shot pyro. in midair. That is... An, that's extremely important to realize. Now the placeholder will need support, that's the only thing. With the pyros dead, that's going to be tr tricky, I don't... Oh, Jack! That... Yeah, Jack. That would actually be a... That's a good... Well... Good-ish idea. The Jack is very strong against... It's the right... Assault, generally, is the good choice against Slashes. Jack is going to be incredibly strong against Slashes, but... 
the slashes can just run away. That's what I Jack's mean. Very it's, slow. it's a decision making and question. And scorches rip a Jack to shreds. Like, if Google Frog makes the wrong decision about when to when to stop and when to move with the slashers, the Jack will just wreck it. They'll just wreck it. Or if the placeholders get close enough. However, if Google Frog is on the ball about when to move. Yeah, that Jack's gonna do nothing. That's what I'm thinking Google Frog's gonna do. I, I don't see Google Frog messing up that decision. Yeah, it might mean Google Frog has to retreat from this. Right now, uh, Yoga's not a lot of threat. He's starting to lose territory, he's starting to lose economy. And the Jack coming in just means that uh, he can force that back. Although, I mean, looks like Google Frog's retreating on his own. He might be a bit afraid, because if you push slashes too far forward, sometimes you would lose them all, and if you mm -hmm. lose all your slashes, it could be very hard, because they're very... They're very snowbally. Yeah, Google Frog's we'll doing that off the automation. But we'll see the placeholder and a jack. That means he's going to get he's going to get slashes. He's going to kill slashes. They can't oh, run away. And that was right the worst time to. Where's the black hole effect? That was the worst time for that to happen too, because the jack now gets a free slasher. Yeah, that's a minor victory. Uh, the pyre up the side also helps. Mm hmm. But yeah, then we have com wars on the left side. Com defense wars, where they're building defenders and LTs against each other. So. We'll see how that goes. Well, it looks like Yurga is winning. The two defenders against the Lotus is a clear win for the defenders. Google Frog getting its own, their own defenders, but slightly out of range. Yeah, I think he's just backed off, and they're going to just have a standoff at this point. But, but ooh, now uh, Yurga's, Yurga's being is moving very forward aggressive. way too much. Ah, uh, only takes out one of the Scorchers. That's not enough. The Jack tries to help, but not going to work. That placeholder is dead. So wait, wait, that placeholder is good as dead. And the Jack, not able to get away from there. Might kill another Scorcher, maybe? Yes. You one need more. to set up a line for that. You need to use them within a line to prevent the Raiders from getting too close like that. You need either, either a defensive line, wow. a de line Gets of away. moderators, a line of pyros. Ooh, and that that's needs nice. To repair. I need to die. Yeah, that Jack no, almost died. You can see what engagement has been... Uh... It's worth it then. If you can repair yeah. it, it's worth it. Although, this does swing the, swing the momentum because he can't use that Jack for the next few minutes. So it's sort of like... It's dead metal for the next minutes while he, while he has to repair it. Mm -hmm. And also, he is stalling. Uh, he, he, he is slightly stalling on energy. Although Google Frog's stalling more on energy, it's kind of because Google Frog's expanding more. Uh, moving into the on a different front. He and has a second jack now. And oh, nice. Yeah, so I can just swap back and forth. Repair the one jack, throw the other jack forward. That's the thing. It's not quite dead metal because the jack is not costing metal for the factory. The factory is being able to do its thing. Getting placeholders. Mm, it's an investment, though. It's like investing in something which is not currently paying this off. Is, I don't mm. like all these uh, defenders here. Uh... Yeah. Oh, don't worry. They soon won't be. It was single Ravager wasted all. Then he moves the slashes in. The, slash, the Ravager was just there to tank. Really good. Choice, he might, then just in the second move fall, he might in. kill that commander if he focuses it. Yeah, his own commander is uh, support again. Not morphed. We've seen a lot of that in this 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 time where we have Gotta and we have Google both using. Oh, Ooh. Google Fox Commander uh, is. He's not microwing his turret. Oh, one more one more defender shot would have killed that. And here we have. And, uh, ah, there, there it is. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Last defender shot as the jack tears apart the forces while Google Frog was distracted. Uh, that was just beautifully executed. It looks like Yoga's commander yeah. might. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, down it goes. Oh, no. Ouch, all the build power on the west side of the map is in Google. Actually, Google Frog is taking it. Google Frog's throwing in the pa just everything they can to take the west side of the map for themselves. That's what they need to do. Uh, Jurgen needs to come in with his constructors. He has a placeholder there. He has a jack. He needs to repair his jack. He needs to get his own constructors in there. The advantage that Google Frog has, uh, that the Jurgen has right now, slightly larger army, two jacks, really strong, and he has constructors, jump constructors. Mm. They have slow. Which means against Ravages, against any kind of Raider unit, you can really slow him down. The Jacks become a lot stronger. He wants to send his Constructors there anyway to reclaim and to repair. So if he goes in there with, there with that, he I think he definitely has an advantage. I agree. And actually, it looks like Google Frog wasn't committing that much to it. They're actually trying to go through the center and a bit through the eastern side of the, or the northeast side of the map. Which he looks, looks like, like he's kind of trying fail. to distract through the center, yeah. Uh, Sprung points out, puppy spam. If Yoga throw some puppies in right now, he would get so many puppies so fast. Oh yeah, going to the west side of the map, taking all that, that would be it. I feel like the resolution seems lower. It's Yoga's chasing um, Ravager right now with the Jack though. He's, he's never going to catch him. He took out a, a Scorcher, which is nice, but yeah, I don't know how well that's going to work. Yeah, it doesn't seem too And he likely. lose his other Jack to Scorchers. He's trying to move the, moder the placeholder in to, to fix this, but I don't know how well it's working. Oh, wow. Well... Actually, just in time, uh, well. placeholder. 
Mm, it's no, a, it's never mind. Jewel Frog is more reinforcement coming jump. in. It's not going to matter. Jump. Yeah, we jumped over the puddle. That might help, but no, the Scorchers are still in position. <laughs> he lives again. Oh, no, no, no. It gets oh, away. No, it doesn't. Almost. Yeah, no, so it close. He, he really need to use his constructors there um, to slow slow them down. That would have given the Jack the advantage and take them out. Mm -hmm. Jewel Frog is really taking territory here. He's taking the upper right hand side, while Jurga is sort of still struggling to get this uh, reclaim. This relies on these three constructors here. Oh, they need to jump back. They need to jump back. He's not paying attention to them. No, they're getting ripped apart. They're dead. Yeah, Google probably think might swing it from the air just because of that. I probably this jacked most of so the constructors. This factory is so hard to play. Even the constructors, you need to baby them because they can retreat from most raiders because they can slow the raiders down, uh, jump away, especially if it's over an obstacle or a building, and then run because they're quite fast. And they can often well, just escape from any the raiders. Either you guys watching the stream, or you need to pay attention. Thinking, either you guys watching the stream or thinking the same thing because we see puppy spam. Puppy spam it's versus the to do spam. when you. He had three constructors there, so I'm thinking, I can take it. But then he knows he can't. An undefended wreck uh, field that you know you cannot secure is the perfect place to make to put puppies. Because you're just denying it to the enemy. It's not something you're going to be able to secure yourself. Yeah. And you're turning into puppies, which are not as efficient as, as reclaiming directly. But they're fast, and uh, they it defend them. themselves when they're taking the reclaim field. And really, once if, if you're able to get away with that, especially with the two jacks distracting stuff over to the north, if they can take that southwest side with all those puppies and get a critical mass... The cost efficiency won't even matter. They'll just have enough units to win. That's what puppies are about. And he's slowly moving through. This relies on having enough time to um, not have Scorchers come in there. Relies on Google Frog not thinking he needs to take that territory because, again, he's chasing the Jacks around. Google Frog has a very big army. This is going to be difficult, but it might just work. And those Jacks are doing a very nice job of scorches. not dying. Or they were. I mean, they were. that was even between the two. They were. I, mean, I don't know how Yurga was doing it exactly, but they were keeping everything even. At the jack health, making sure that... The pyro is chasing them now. If he chases off the pyro a bit more, he's going to have a huge force of puppies. And that's exactly what's happening. And that... Wow. Yes, that is exactly what's happening. That, that is like... Um, someone says that's the potential to end the game right there. This is one of the real things about Jump Factory a lot of people don't think about. is just their potential to... If there's a swing, if you if big armies die and both people lose their commander at once, which is almost exactly what happened. Both people use big armies, lose big armies at once. You can rebuild so fast with Google Frog has uh, noticed he wants to use darts. Which is Just, the right uh, choice, but even then, I think Squirt, metal well, Slash metal. is the right choice. Oh, now he's, now he's in the north. He's taking the, he's taking the jacks. He's using the puppies. He's taking everything. He's securing so much of the map. And even wow. sending darts in, they can just pick them off one at a time. And they're free puppies, you know? Ooh, but going in against the LOTs, I don't like that. No. no. It's I not, think that was a mistake. Ready. That's a micro mistake. Off territory. Jürgen didn't mean to do that. He needs that, to I don't secure think. the territory behind the puppies here, and he needs uh, some pyros to take out the LOTs, as he's doing in the on the right hand side. Or some jacks would work as well. But after oh, this, he's out of. Uh, he has no fallback plan after this. No. Yeah, he needs There's to expand. I don't think he should go for the win here. There's too much defense in the base. I think he should go because there's solar panels. You can't take out solar panels with puppies. Yurga I think agrees. he knows it. He's going to pull back. He needs to expand behind this. Yeah, Yurga Google Frog know knows this, there. and he's already sending in scorches. The problem is Yurga doesn't actually know what's in the main base, so it doesn't really know what to attack with. If you can you kind of be guaranteed. View. You can be kind of guaranteed though that there's yeah, going to be some defenders. Yeah, that's true. has no radar. Uh, solar panels, and you're never going to kill solar panels with uh, puppies. Oh. Look at this, so many puppies wasted on a solar panel. All he's killed are some static defenses. <laughs> he should have used those defensively. If you use those defensively, you wouldn't be able to get any squashes through Although them. I Instead, think... Google has a big rate of force. And oh, Yurga, Yurga did not see the air factory switch either. So there wasn't even any information a... gained. That was a shame. That was an impressive attempt to swim. I really think swing, but... You can't, you can't charge into a base with puppies. There's, even though they, this is, they're pretty strong early game if you build them straight to the factory. Late game they become much stronger because they can get them almost for free, sort of semi for free from yeah. reclaim. But they're not a strong late game, which is why they have the advantage of being free. So how much dark does if they were they strong late game free, here's the darts coming in. A yeah. dozen apparently. It's enough. They're actually quite strong. They're like mini scrubbers. You need critical mass. They have a lot of alpha. They can just sweep through, take something out. Yeah, they're the not bad as raiders. You, you can I, often skip I scorched They're time. half daggers. They have a half to be half daggers. Darts. 
He chased him off for now, but I think there are too many scorches. I think there's too much economic advantage. Yoko still has some pirates around the side, around the back, which is good news. Um, as long as you have raiders in the enemy territory, it still means, you know, you're aware of what they have, you're aware of them expanding, you're able to kill expanding constructors and keep them down. Yeah, although but Yoko's gonna, on a much smaller territory right Yoko now. now just getting radar again, just in time to see the scorchers coming to their territory. Dangerous level of scorchers coming in, and very few defenses available to actually deal with them. The pyros were not intercepting the line, and the remaining pyros, they might try to go for the defenders, I don't know. They really slowed down though, the constructors slowed them all down, this means the pyro has a big advantage, he can actually fire from behind the solar panels, use them to tank, oh, but he's getting too close, mm, ah. it might still work, yeah, no, no, no it doesn't even matter. The defender needs to fire, that's his last hope. And it does. The last hope. There you go, perfect. That, it's... Pulled off. I didn't even mean that defender, so... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you meant the one behind the solar panel. But there was another defender. But now the air switch is coming into, in, into its own, so... Yeah, Yurga's Yurga really is on the back foot. Yurga is responding in kind, though. Although I, I think, think once you start losing units to bombers, but, um... Yeah, I think Yurga needs more of an economy than this. He's only on, like... He's only on... Oh, he's, he's ramping it up with reclaiming things, but... Yeah, these constructors are even getting taken out by Scorchers. Mm -hmm. so. And the Dart's moving in once again to go for another assault. Oh, almost go for another assault. Pyro's flanking them nicely, though. Cutting off their retreat. Should be able to kill off a few of them. Yeah, three of them die for free. Nice cutoff, but at the same time, we have more Ravens coming in, and that is going to stop everything. And I think Yurga from here... I don't think they have time. Do they have time to build this? I don't... That's going to be a minute and a half from splitting all their forces, not to mention at the same time. No, Yurga doesn't even think they have a chance. Valiant the, effort, the, though. That was very yeah, close. Google Frog, Frog has been going uh, gunships a lot, but I think versus Pyros, he knows he needs to go uh, bombers, or it's better to go bombers, because mm -hmm. Ravens are really strong against Pyros. Their high weight means they can get sniped out much very easily, whereas, you know, there's still something like Glaze, it's almost not worth bombing them. So Scorchers and Pyros, um, especially Pyros, bombers are really strong. That was definitely a proper demonstration of how that works. But overall, well done by Yurga. I mean, yeah, they yeah, lost, but that on, was... he held on really well. Yeah. yeah. Especially for that matchup. Was... I mean, that was a weird match. I mean, the factory choice, I don't know. I wouldn't have gone for that. Like, I think on this map, I think you're right. I mean, it's harder for factory to play in general. There's sort of the, the argument that uh, jump factory is only good on certain maps. And there are no maps like that that exist. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I think that's not exactly true. But on a flat map like that, where it's very vehicle favored, he was always at a disadvantage. He played exceptionally well. We saw some really great tricks. We saw some great placeholder play. We saw how micro intensive the factory is. You know, all that jumping and all those tricks and all those, you know, when you need the dead on shot from the placeholder and things. But in the end, yeah, Yoga couldn't pull it out. And it's no great surprise given the matchup on that map. Well, yeah, still, I don't... I don't agree with that particular choice. Yeah, I think... People were saying in the chat that it was a mistake because he said oops when he started the game. But I, I, th I think he did well. I think he showcased well. I think that um, there are certain gambits where if you can pull it off, the factory is actually really strong, even on an app like that. Uh, Gotta used to play it a ton with the old moderators and pyros, and... If you can get a pyro in, and it's hard to do it against a good player like Google Frog, but if you can get a pyro in early, you can wreck a lot of the base, and you're playing from an advantage. You're playing from you're playing from a base advantage from there, and even if you're playing under the weaker factory, you can win. But um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he was expecting glaives. Pyros are very strong against glaives, so it's a good chance he was expecting cloak bot, not vehicles, and that uh, he's expecting to be able to kite the glaives and win that way. Well, that makes sense. I just I don't know. I mean. At any rate, it was... That was the match we saw. There's not much... Um, well. Yeah, I, I think it was a really good game. I think it was a really, but really well played. I think it showcased the good good, good um, use of the Jump Factory. But um, yeah, it, it is the matchup. It is a hard, hard matchup. Anyway, it looks it's like... It's a hard factory to play in any matchup with all that micro with the jump. Yeah. Like, keep pressing H, which brings up a share window instead of J. It's something I... It's still a reason I don't really play jump factory. Oh, I actually I changed know, my jump... My jump key actually is H. I shifted all my hotkeys... <laughs> because you the... keep hitting H. No, 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 you don't understand. What I did is everything from Q to Y and then down, I set up as my command panel, 
and then everything from UJM to the right is unit states. So That's a really interesting way to do things. Most of my unit states I've really wanted to do, yeah. It took me a little while. The hardest part is transports, and actually my load and unload is the same as jump. Or load is the same as jump, I think. I think if H and N There are a few too many commands in the game, yeah. There are a few that aren't really used that much. I mean, honestly, we could almost put load and unload on the same button as, like, D-gun or something, you know, as well, a special ability. The button you press and it sucks units in or something, rather than having all these commands for it. But, yeah. you know, it, it's nice to have a good UE, and that often means lots of buttons. Powerful well, UE, I should it, say. Not a good UE. I never claim the game as a good UE. It has a powerful UE. It has, okay, it has a really, this is something I've mentioned before when it comes to arguments about, like, people talking about StarCraft UI versus Total Annihilation UI. Total Annihilation has a great command interface. It gives you a lot of ability to command your units the way you want to. StarCraft, however, has a great graphical user interface. The layout is great. The way the units are laid out is great. The way the buildings, lay, the way the commands, in terms of discoverability, it's great. In terms of aesthetics, it's great. So it looks nice. There's less power, but what power there is, is better presented. It's often the compromise. I mean, a part of that is also, I mean, polish, obviously. I mean, it's yeah. just purely polish, and we need more of that. But part of it is also a compromise. We're power users. We make it as power users. make it for power users. We'd, we'd, you know, we have you know, open source Linux stuff. We have hackers you know, just constantly making new widgets and stuff for the game. So yeah, it, it's geared a bit yeah. towards that. But it's, it's something we're ramping up for the Steam release that we're really thinking about, and we're really go, trying to go more towards a bit more usability, cutting down the inter interface a little bit, making it more streamlined. Yeah, I've been, I have been trying... Well, I mean, that's why I've had all the internal debates about the economy display, because yeah. trying to make that more user-friendly. trying to make that more user-friendly. It's very hard to convey to someone who's not used to flow economy that they need to get used to flow economy, and I, I appreciate your efforts in that. I, I'm not sure that... Well, the latest sure one, that, um, the latest one is more Google Frog than me. Although I've been using it myself yeah. since I think that that's a great design. Yeah, right. I think it's a, I think it's a massive improvement over anything that I was doing. Like it's, it kind of started from what I was doing, and I basically showed, like I built something based on what I had before and split it up, and then I showed it to Google Frog, and he's like, okay, that's interesting, and then he went and turned it into what was there, and I thought, that's awesome. That's exactly what it should have been in the, or very close to what it should have been in the first place. I'm still on the fence about whether it should be net as numbers or net as arrows because the number of, amount of numbers may be too high otherwise. But other than that, I think it's a great setup. I think that that particular interface is probably one of the closest to being right without going... I mean, the other way, of course, you could do it is essentially do what Greygoo did, which is have net and storage, or I guess in our case, net gross storage or something like that. And it's like no bars or anything, just a couple numbers. Yeah, I think that's very hard when you're playing frantically. I mean, this is why I like the big bars, because the big bars which just show your current storage. Because when, when I'm looking at those, I'm not actually looking for, like, what percentage my thing is full. I just see the grey bar is grey all to the end, and it's flashing green. I'm like, oh, pff, I'm excessing. Or I see the grey bar is empty, and the orange, uh, yellow bar is full, and it's like, oh, I need more metal. Well, you know, it's just, it, you just, it's like a big button which shows you what it's doing, but it's also, it grades towards that state. It's like, oh, no, it's going up. I, I see it's going that. up. It's almost there. I can see I need see to that. do something about it. And I can kind of respect that, and I understand how that works when you're used to it. And actually, the way that the the UI, the current default UI is set up, I think is a great compromise between what it had before. Like the, the power of what you see for the gradations is nice, but at the same time, before, it was way too primary compared to the gross and net income. So I think that... I think you, it's very difficult, not impossible, to uh, show... Um net income or uh, income or rate of income rather than storage using bars because I mean, oh, one of the old system yeah because it's like what's your number do the grass bars just grow infinitely as the number gets larger that doesn't and work so you use one versus, yeah which is why i'm thinking why would you use bars i think like bars i don't know why cave dog used them in the first place i've never understood well that. they use it because you you do have a maximum storage, and when your storage is full, you're wasting resources. Which is not yeah, but you have a maximum has. storage in CNC so it's as well, and they just didn't bother with a bar. Yeah, I, I think it's good to have a visual indicator. I think there's not another... It's graphical indicators like that. There's not know. a lot of ways to do this sort of well, thing. Um, to, yeah, to visualize flow, and then you need to know total amount of flow, like, as you say, the 20 metal hump. It's something you talk about a lot. You need to know when you hit that number. And right now, all you have is a big... Um, number saying when you hit the number you see the number but like how would you visualize that 
as a bar or a chart or a graph you don't. or you a, use a number. like a line. Yeah, well, it just it it doesn't advertise itself unless it flashes when it hits a well, certain thing, I and then players that. are not going to know what that means if it flashes itself. Whereas a bar, just, it tells you, oh, you know, it's coming up. Oh, it's gone off the end, and it's flashing now. That's well, the problem. Something I think, about that. The problem I think with the bar is more so that I mean, yeah, the flashing is nice, but otherwise, you're kind of you're making a lot of attention to something that, especially for people who are used to RTS games but not used to flow economy, they're expecting storage is the primary thing. So they see this bar advertising storage and they go, oh, I gotta worry about my storage, my absolute amount of money, whereas that's almost irrelevant. Almost. It's almost, the, the, fr frankly, I see storage more as like your income per several minutes. You know, it's your income averaged over several minutes. That's what storage is. And if your income per average uh, over several minutes is too positive in a direction, the storage will fill up. You know, it's sort of oh. like, so it's actually a reflection of that. But you're right, the players do have trouble putting, wrapping their heads around it. I just don't think there's a better way to communicate that to players other than when you want the net gain and the net loss to be big numbers. You want that to be big numbers. But I think for, you need a graphical representation of two and... I think the bars are good for that. Well, I, I think. But I, I, I don't know if we should be talking shop all night. 